Welcome to Speak of the Devil. My name is Reverend Campbell, and I've got a hell of a show for you this week. I do want to lead this show by saying thank you for those of you willing to migrate over here to Twitch while I try to f decode the issues that I'm having with YouTube. Uh, they are extensive, and that's why I have to be here, unfortunately, for the time being. So the plan is to record live streams here and then migrate them over to YouTube channel uh, after the fact. And so the, the permanent video will be in YouTube, but all the live stuff will be here again until the issues are worked out. So let me give a quick shout out to um, those of you uh, joining us. I do appreciate your attention. Uh, Adam, uh, Dark Wish, Rencaz, if you guys have any questions or comments throughout the course of this conversation, Please get them up there in the chat and um, I will address them as soon as I can. Uh, it's weird because I've got like this delay on this monitor <laughs> showing me. So I'm going to try not to, to get all confused and stuff. Um, another bit of note uh, to make here at the top of the show uh, for you patrons. Uh, brand new Hereticus patron Adam, thank you so much uh, for your support. With that, all of these shows are brought to you by the Benefactor of Patrons, Ara and DA. And of course, we had some new admirator patrons as well uh your guys support means everything that's the reason why i continue doing this thing so thank you very much all right let's get on to the show let me introduce our guest today uh citizen ryan Rees. how are you my friend i'm doing great thank thanks you for, for having me on oh it's my pleasure man uh last time we had a conversation uh, I feel like you buried the lead a little bit on me, <laughs> but we've been talking since and we've got stuff planned for the future, but today is not a day about reflections or dreams of the future. It's about examinations of what is newly released. You had just released your book, um, uh, bathroom, uh, poems from the bathroom wall. I want to give a quick photo of the cover here and that's not the cover so i totally ruined <laughs> that one sorry there we go post in the bathroom wall by ryan reeves uh we're gonna be talking about this um i had of course the other illustration all these illustrations we're gonna get into that in just a minute um but at the top here could we start with a, a reading from sure this? i'm gonna start with one that uh is kind of special to me Kind of like this one a lot. Okay, so I'm on the pot and it's 10 o'clock. A note on the wall that tickled my cock. Be here at 10 and Kelly the cleaner will cup your balls and suck your wiener. The idea of it all was very brief. My dick got hard as I thought of relief. Right there, the door swung open wide. There was no place that I could hide. My Woody gave the wrong impression as Kelly began his cleaning session. Um, so that's the type of show we're going to be having today, people. Just mm -hmm. to let you know right off the bat. In the, in the gutter. <laughs> it's going to be where everyone wants to be ultimately, in the gutter, because yeah. that's where it's fun. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about wiping your sleeve off. Just rub, it in. Nope. just rub it in man um okay so just i want to do a quick primer for those of uh the audience who may not have caught our last episode because again it was like a year ago i just had the realization before we started yeah, um, right. can you give us a little bit of background on uh, yourself uh, just for them okay yeah uh i grew up in a small farming town in oregon and uh really liked growing up there, um, did roller skating, chess, uh, did some track and field in high school, and then uh, moved on to college. I studied business, and I also studied uh, physical human anthropology um, and took that all the way to my master's. Um, just decided it wasn't lucrative enough, you know, as an anthropology professor to take on all that debt, so moved on. Yeah. And, you know, we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, have you ever written, like formally written anything before other than college papers and stuff? <laughs> Besides my, my master's thesis? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is my first time I've written a, like a, a book. So, yeah. So, okay. I, I want to go back to the genesis of why this book. <laughs> uh, fair I, enough. I got to know. Because um, 
Mm -hmm. it, it's unexpected from your background, but then there is never any way that anyone would be like, oh yeah, they're going to ultimately write a book of po dirty poetry. Uh -huh, like, yeah, right. That's not an option in the yearbook. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, anyone that knows me from, from grade school, high school, or even college, they, they would expect it. They would understand. Yeah, I, uh, I grew up around logging and I grew up around uh, uh, construction. Mm -hmm. And so I got, you know, exposed to the stuff at an early age. I was in a rest stop, I, a rest stop bathroom, I think when I was seven. I can't remember exactly. It was like a truck stop. Oh, wow. And I hit the toilet, man. And there are these, these fucked up poems all over the wall, you know, people writing shit like, fuck you, dick. No, fuck you, dick. And, you know, people that write on shit house walls, roll their shit in little balls, you know, that kind of shit. <laughs> it was awesome. I loved it. And ever since then, I've, I've loved going to public restrooms, even if they're fucking filthy, just so I can look on the walls and see, see what's new, you know, see what kind of new poetry is out there. <laughs> I, I think it takes a special person to actually, like, carve in or, like, Sharpie in, because you have to have it, like, going into the bathroom. You have to know, uh -huh. oh, I'm bringing my Sharpie. Like, this is happening. Pretty this is what sharp. I do. This is, like, a life choice that they have made yep. to always be prepared i mean what type of person is just like you know what i i, ha I have a voice and i need it to be heard and mm -hmm. where else are you going to have a captive audience as captive toilet. as in a public restroom <laughs> um okay so have you ever had like terrible experiences going into public because you you mentioned no it doesn't matter how filthy it is but I kind of feel like you need like a tetanus shot or something, like a booster. Uh, you know, there's been some toilets that are just fucking disgusting. Like they'll be overflowing. Like someone took a huge <laughs> shit and used way too much toilet paper, yeah. and it's just clogged and overflowing, and there's shit on the floor. Okay, like maybe that one I'm not gonna use. <laughs> someone took a shit on the toilet seat or their shit. Like my my personal my personal line is this. If there's shit on the toilet seat, I'm yeah. not going to use it. Right. If it's just piss, I'll wipe it off. <laughs> You're a better man than I. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, look, I mean, yeah, someone took a piss there, but it's dry. You know, I don't have their wet <laughs> piss on my ass. Oh, man. Yeah, I've ran into bathrooms where it literally looks like they were trying to make like, like a pyramid because people mm -hmm. just kept using it. On it was the weirdest no, was grossest... fucking destroyed. <laughs> oh, I just don't get it, man. Squatting over it. <laughs> yeah. Like you have to add to something like that. That's like a work of art. That takes timing and patience. <laughs> and the bathroom attendant must just be like, no, I want to see where they go with this. <laughs> they must be. I honestly I don't think that some of those toilets get maintained very much. The further you get out, the further you get away from civilization. It's so like you ever go camping. Oh yeah. And they have the outhouses there or whatever. Those things don't get are you kidding me? Those things aren't maintained. Maybe once a month some guy comes to suck out the shit, you know? Yeah. Those That's are brutal it. too. It's like bring your own wipe or else. You're yeah, and the shaking. smell is amazing. Oh yeah. I can't tell you how many of those things, like, that's the other thing I won't do is if someone's pissed on the toilet paper, even if it's dry, I'm not gonna wipe my ass with it. It's nice to know you got standards. I have some standards. <laughs> One of my favorite stories growing up about bathroom um, shenanigans, uh, public bathroom shenanigans, was my uh, stepdad. He was uh, traveling across country or something like that. I uh, used the bathroom and realized that there was no toilet paper anywhere. <laughs> single stall joint. And so he literally like used his fingers and then wrote where's the toilet paper <laughs> on the wall with his own shit. Uh, I was just like, did, he really, did he say that he did that? Yeah. Oh, God. That, that tells me oh. everything I need to know about him as a human. <laughs> to be, that's awesome. To just be okay with that. Like, no, no. Yeah, that takes some grit. Look, that's, yeah, that, that's more than I've got. Oh, man. I just could never, never. Because then... You're you're fucked at that point. Like you you walk out the door, like 
Well, you I guess, no, you could wash your hands. That's true. How good you wash, your finger's going to smell like shit for days. Oh, dude. Oh, my gosh. Just the way Did he give you a pat on the shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, here's some uh, chocolate uh, raisinets for you there. Here, put these in your mouth. This is chocolate fudge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mall rats, man. <laughs> so gross. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, like I've also had, uh, weird experiences where I used to work when I was going through college, I worked at a Starbucks basically in a Barnes and Noble, um, and it's a bookstore for people who don't know what books are and, um, <laughs> what we're talking about today. It's a book. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, let, before we get too deep into this, uh, insanity here, um, your book, where's the best place people can go to pick up the it's, it's book? It's Amazon. Amazon? It's on Amazon. Yep. Okay, so just search poems from the bathroom wall uh, yep. on Amazon, and you'll be able to find an author. Right it'll, the you'll, it'll come right up. You also have a Facebook page, though, right? Yeah, I got a Facebook page. Find it at Bathroom Poems. Nice. Beauty. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, yeah, the chocolate pretzels. That's exactly right, Master Tor. Um, so, uh, yeah, my one of the worst, I think, is when you run into people who are trying to, like, start a glory hole i think is probably the most gross to me like i would i was like taking a leak and i heard like this scratching oh he's digging inside, out a glory hole huh? and he's like digging the glory hole as i was trying to take a leak and they like peeked over the edge ah! and i just saw the side eye as i'm like looking up i'm like no no and like do like the hand cover over my penis like no you can't look at mine mine's special <laughs> What do you think about the glory hole in the bathroom? I mean, we got writing on the walls. Let, let's get a little dirtier. I'm not putting my dick through a glory hole. I don't give a fuck. I'm terrified. Like, okay, so, of course, because I'm a pervert, I've always thought about it. But I would never actually do it again because sure. I, you never know what's on the other side. And I guarantee, guarantee the dude over there has got something. Your, your dick's going to grow spots. <laughs> it's going to fall away. It's going to, who knows, right? I'm terrified that they're not there for pleasure, that they're there to bite it off. Like, that's oh, my fear. Oh, like, serial penis biter. <laughs> He's got him Baba ain't got shit on them. Wall, <laughs> uh, tacked on his wall. No, what if it's like, what if it's, a, you know, a, like a crazy clown that's just on the other side waiting? <laughs> you Could stick be. it in and they just, Arr! like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. That's no, why no. I'll never do it. <laughs> I would even be afraid. I mean, it's the ultimate like sign of trust. I would be afraid of even if someone I knew, because you only have a little range of motion until you're broken, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a delicate operation. And in the throes of passion, something <laughs> might happen I'm Telling you, man. where your dick ends up crooked. I mean, what if they what if they bend it to an angle where you can't slide it out? Oh. That's just it, stuck. There. It just looks like Gonzo's nose from the Muppets. Yep. <laughs> Doink. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off on a fucking tangent of uh, this nonsense. Um, yeah, all the bathroom poetry I've ever seen has always been like, you know, for a good time call, or it's always mm -hmm. like uh, doodles and stuff like that. I've never seen like uh, the limericks and stuff that anecdotally everyone talks about. They're they're kind of rare. Gotta be honest, they're mm. kind of rare, but they're out there. Like I would, I would shit in England. I would shit in France. Before I would shit here, I would shit in my own pants. You know, this shit like that. You know, <laughs> you see that every now and again. Yeah. <laughs> People who write on shit house walls roll their shit into little balls. People that read those lines of wit eat those little balls of shit. <laughs> okay, hold on a second, because I've got to know. It's one thing to appreciate the humor of a subject or an exercise like, yeah. you know, writing on bathroom walls. It's another thing entirely to write your own original poetry in the hundreds and then create a book out of it. So when did you decide this, this um, uh, mild right. appreciation or great appreciation for the bathroom limerick should be something you should explore yourself? Well, um... <clears throat> Two people were really responsible. Number one, my buddy at work, Santi, and even Hesse, 
but Santi, uh, he and I got into an argument one day about who could write the dirtiest poem. And he didn't really know my history. Right. So, you know, I wrote a really filthy one. Of course, I win hands down. He says, okay, you know, that's funny. Can you come up with more? So I started writing them. And I started kind of sharing them around to people. Because I'm a sick fuck and I like mm-hmm. to make people. And, uh, you know, then, then my buddy Patrick DeMarco, he said, you better publish that that's good shit people would pay money for that shit (laughs) (laughs) and what a great legacy to leave behind (laughs) he didn't say that part but right so i started thinking like wow you know everyone does think they're funny maybe i should do that so yeah you i just kept writing you've serial bombed me a few times with the poem without any context or anything you just drop a poem in a message i'm just like what what yeah. the what what why I are started, you sending me i started this? doing that and then and then after that I, I said wait a second you know some people might not appreciate this kind of humor maybe i better start asking first so <laughs> then i started asking you know hey you want to read some dirty poetry hey kid come here you want to read some dirty poetry <laughs> i got some candy too <laughs> i got some candy in my panelist van <laughs> Someone my windowless me. panel van come on kid <laughs> oh man uh master Torres says you gotta wonder if poe yates keats and the like have left verse on any lavatory walls i, I mean, guarantee you what those guys were doing they i bet they i bet they have a whole i bet they just have a diary like hidden under some floorboards somewhere yet to be discovered that would be just amazing filthiest writing Every occultnik in the world thinks every other uh, ancient wisdom is really like some magical passed down legacy, but really it's just a single tome of bathroom humor that the greats through history have added to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the greatest grim- grimoire. The greatest minds in history. And it's buried <laughs> under the bathroom, like under the third floor board of the bathroom of some ancient pub that's been there since 1574 or something like that, yeah, right? It's like two blocks away from the Vatican. Like some Langdon some has to solve guy it. In trench coat will approach you if you're a good enough writer, and he'll say, Psst, "Go to the go to look look there. Get the get the. It's your destiny to take this and, and write your poems." Yeah, you will inevitably have to like run from. Uh, uh, others trying to seek it out as well. Inevitably, <laughs> there'll be like a knife thrown at you. You'll have to like, yeah. duck. There are going to be like female spies trying to swindle it out from underneath you as they succumb to your wiles, supposedly. There will be an, an ancient order in the in the Catholic Church that's devoted to finding and snuffing out this book. <laughs> the... Uh, the Otis, uh, the Otis uh, duty eye, or something like that. <laughs> it's a secret order of papals. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, we could go here forever. <laughs> uh, so when you finally came to terms with, okay, so there is clearly an audience for this. Mm-hmm. How long did it take you to write, you know, hundreds of original poems? Well, the creative process is kind of weird sometimes it would only be one sometimes it would be as many as three a day but basically five days a week i I wrote you know one to three a day Mm. Jeez. yeah yeah that's what i said (laughs) it was quite a writing process so but you're you're married so is your girl okay if you don't mind me asking (laughs) is she okay with you (laughs) Spending time writing three poems a day. You're like, hey, honey, check this out. Is she okay with it? <laughs> um, she finds, she thinks they're gross. She was my editor for the book. So she thinks they're really gross. Did she, so, is she, she now just, questioning still being with you? <laughs> no, she's not. But <laughs> she's like, I didn't know this was in you, honey. I, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> this was not in our vows. Uh, we got some great comments here in the chat room. Uh, Master Tor is killing it. The Order of the Porcelain Altar. That's who it is. Oh, yes. Those Catholics it. have it. Um, Dark Wish is saying there used to be this guy 
this guy's old girlfriend and he used to call bathroom Dave who had always drawn the bathroom walls um, at the times he would be there for sex. Every time the drawings would get more elaborate and the messages more forward. They looked forward to visiting the park's bathroom to see what the bathroom Dave left. For whatever reason, that reminds me of Candyman. Like, stay away from those elaborate bathroom decors. <laughs> or don't say bathroom Dave five times in a mirror, okay? I'm just saying, you don't know what's going to okay. happen. Okay. <laughs> danger. Danger. Danger, danger. Um, Okay, so I can't. I'm I'm stunned. I don't know that I could come. Like that's. Did you know you had creative writing in you? Uh, or did you? I don't know. I was always kind of creative as a kid, but you know, I put I put my own rhymes together for people. I'd I'd always be the kid that knew the dirty jokes because mm. you know my dad ran an insulation business, so you know. <laughs> Yeah. It was in construction, so I always heard the best shit, the best <laughs> shit first. Only the premium shit for you. <laughs> yeah, I always got the best stuff. People, I... people loved it. Every, everyone in school loved it. I don't know. I just, yeah. I like filthy humor. I, was, I, I imagine whenever you're writing something, because I know this is my ca the case for me, sometimes I'll get like stuck in a place and I'll have to come back to it. <laughs> Did you ever find yourselves returning to poems at later dates because you just couldn't find a good ending that you were satisfied with a um, happy ending well it wasn't the ending that was ever the problem sometimes i would have to scratch out and just start over like i i had the idea mm -hmm. i always get the idea for the poem the way i want it to be the way i want it to end that's that's how i start and once i have the punchline, mm -hmm. then i can work on the rest of it the punchline in the Kelly case was, oh, it's a dude. Mm -hmm. Kelly's a guy's name, too. Ha yeah, ha. Right. Joke's on you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mouth yeah. to mouth, man. Yeah, mouth to mouth, bro. <laughs> bro? Did you yeah. say bro? So, yeah. So, you know, then you build it from there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't flow right. Sometimes there's extra verses that you just don't need. And you just cross them out. So there was a lot of destruction. Yeah. But after a while, I kind of got stuck. So dudes at work, like Hesse, was amazing for coming up with shit that I hadn't done yet. Oh, nice. Just, you know, it's good to have friends that appreciate you're a filthy fucker. Hell yeah. That's why they're friends. Sometimes you need some help. Absolutely. Um, I want to read uh, Patrick, one of my favorite poems, Patrick, if you're okay with it. Great one. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to dramatically read it. <clears throat> <laughs> I needed to piss and couldn't wait. My need to whiz, not up for debate. Too many people to use the bin on a bus with no jar to go in. But next to me, what do I see? A half-drank juice in which I can pee. There you go. Bag overlap, I begin to leak until the jars fill to the peak. I put the juice back on the seat. Owner comes back looking for his treat he puffs the top and bottoms up i grin as he drinks the entire cup <laughs> yeah i just I, I don't know why i find that so funny i remember as a little kid convincing my stepbrother to drink his own urine and yeah. so maybe that's why it's, it's a call back to my childhood yeah that might that that's might be super funny <laughs> yeah that that one was uh from high school when I was on the track team and we were all traveling on a bus and uh, someone that these two guys were working together. So they, they picked this guy they're going to fuck with. Mm. And then one of them gets his attention. It's talking to him. The other reaches over, grabs his Gatorade. That's like three quarters gone and pisses in it oh, and then puts it back. <laughs> and then they both kind of go back and just watch, watch as he fucking gulps down that pissy oh, Gatorade. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure you could tell the difference between piss and Gatorade. Gatorade is kind I of. I mean, gross. I don't think that I don't warm. think he knew until they told him. Okay, done. Oh man, that's brutal. Yeah, hey, he got his electrolytes. <laughs> oh jeez, um, I I want to get back a little bit back to process before I get to uh. uh 
contributions to this piece because um, it's no small feat putting a book of any type together. Uh, had you ever compiled anything like this before for print in any any form? Uh, I had some practice with my thesis because my thesis was about mm, eight right. pages. So, but that that's it. And I had never been that complex. I had never worked with, actually, no, my thesis did have charts and diagrams and whatnot. There's a lot of data. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, I'd, I guess I could say I had some practice with my thesis, but never this big. Yeah. It's almost twice as big as my thesis. Hey. So, I mean, did you lean on anyone for assistance or this is all you just figuring it out and executing it? Ooh. Well, I had uh, Josh Lotta do the illustrations for me because I'm not an artist. Yeah. But that's it. I did all, I did the rest of the layout. I did all the formatting. My wife helped me with editing. Um, and, of course, all my friends helped by uh, pointing out what was funny and what could use some work. I would love to have been a fly on the wall of those sessions. Like, you know what? I really love um, the the twist here, but I, I feel like you could work it a little bit better. <laughs> like, spend some more time on this poem and get back to us. It's just not quite time. there. Yeah, dude. When the guy shits, it's just not quite believable. <laughs> I And it's not that I don't believe it. I don't think he believes he's shitting. So yeah, I need you to rework it. Make sure I, I'm invested in him taking that <laughs> shit. In him being invested in taking that shit. <laughs> Motivations for your poem. That's great. Um, I, so I want to hear also the pitch that you gave to Josh Lotta. Like, did you know him already? Were you guys friends? Like, how do you... Nope. I pitched, it by, I pitched it because I knew about him through your podcast. And so I just approached him and said, Hey, man, I know... I know you through the podcast and I'm looking for someone to do my illustrations for me. This is what the book is. Are you interested? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about him. He's just so willing to go along with whatever. Like he's such a, a great individual uh, and uh, clearly a talented il illustrator too. This freaks me out this reminds me of my stepdad like <laughs> riding with a turd right on your cover yeah. god damn that, that freaks me out <clears throat> uh and of course that's only a couple of them there's a few more in there as well but some of them mm -hmm. i just i had to i had to edit for graphic sake like <laughs> you know, edit them out of the presentation i was just like mm, that's a little uh mm, i'm gonna get flagged <laughs> This is going to get flat yeah. German porn if I use uh, that one. Santa, Santa Claus is my favorite, though. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's yeah. a really good one. I didn't show that because I feel like people have to earn it. Yeah. You don't just get it. <laughs> what is that face that's in the chat room? Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Master Tora threw up like a emoji or some weird stuff. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, so there's there's like four original illustrations, four or five original illustrations from Josh Lotta. Um, do you know how many poems you have? I know you have over 100 pages, but... I have over 120. Whew. Yeah. Over 120 original uh, bathroom wall styled uh -huh. uh, inspired poems. Uh, but you also, at the tail end of this, have holiday-specific ones. Yeah, yeah, because I wrote holiday ones, too, depending on what holiday it was when I was going along. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a holiday for everything. It starts with New Year's, and it goes all through the year, the major holidays. Really? Yep. Oh, man. St. Patty's Day's in there. I did a limerick for St. Patty's Day. Suitable. I like it. Yeah. Um... And then uh, what's your expectation for this? Do, do you think that this is going to fuel any future volumes or alternative forms or like, what do you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have been writing some short stories mm -hmm. based on some of the characters out of my book, you know? So like there's, there's a character called Penny the Shitter. <laughs> You can read all about her in the book. I've got a poem about her. 
But I was thinking of doing a short story about Penny. Wow. Because, you know, why not? I, I think I could expand the filthy story. You know, it would it would be more skill. It would be a challenge for sure. It would challenge my abilities to write short stories that are humorous and filthy. Right. <laughs> and I think there is a market for that. Yeah. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing that realized. Uh, that's going to be very interesting because I don't know how you would do that. Like that's going to take some work and... Yeah. I guess that's where you get that motivation, that belief. Yep. I need to believe that she's right. a shitter. <laughs> yep. You need to know that Penny, you need to know Penny's a dirty person. Yeah. So do you just have like notes written and thrown all around your home? Like, yeah. I, I still held on to all the original oh, in their man. everyday little pieces of paper. Uh, just more a sentimental kind of a thing, mm -hmm. but you know, every day I'd sit there and write out on a on a little legal pad, you know, a little mini legal pad. Just write a poem, pass it to my buddy Santi, send it to Patrick, <laughs> send it to everyone on the list. <laughs> um, send it to you. <laughs> did any, Did anyone ever pick up any of those notes and like just sort of give it back to you, like horrified or no? <laughs> I was very, very, very careful. <laughs> You're like hoarding the notes. <laughs> yeah. I was very careful. Well, I mean, I was doing this like when you're when you're at my work, you have an hour where you can clock out and do nothing mm. but eat. So it's like lunch, right? I don't know. But it takes me like fifteen minutes to eat. And then what do I do for the rest of the time? Well, I can write a dirty poem. Maybe I can write two dirty poems. Yeah. Depends on how inspired I am. Okay. That's wild. I would love this scene of like a coworker walking up. Hey, what you doing? And you like slide it over. You see him read it. They don't say anything. They just walk away. <laughs> like, I have sold so many books to people at work. Oh, really? It's not, yeah, it's not even funny. I You're mean, famous. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you had given me, uh, you, you let me know about a review you got, which was your only bad review. Uh, uh -huh. you, oh God, it's funny. Do you remember what that was? Cause I thought that was a really great review. It, it was a, um, it's like an accidental good review. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. It, it was here. Let me pull it up. It was, um, basically the guy was just saying, uh, he was a verified person. He had bought it and he was just saying, that he um man it's funny from the bathroom wall there it is look it comes up in amazon <laughs> it works i know right he says read a dozen or so of these quote-unquote poems and put the book in the garbage i like having fun funny reading material by the toilet and i'm a reasonably liberal guy but this isn't funny it's just trash sorry the author dedicated this to his wife. My sincere sympathy goes out to her. <laughs> Which everyone's severe sympathy should go out to her. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to feel sorry for my wife. That makes me want to buy the book. I know, right? Like, it was so bad that even a reasonably liberal guy who loves <laughs> dirty jokes was like, this is too much for me. Yeah, I'm not touching it, man. Yeah. If you ever yeah. reprint this thing... That should be on your back cover. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> all the all the bad ones. If I if I get any more bad reviews, I hope they're like that. Because that was that was good. Because that's the best. That, how 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 much you didn't get it, so everyone would be like, "Hey, mom, I just wrote you this poem that I stole from this book and like reuse it. Like you got it because this is your original thoughts, and they're supposed to be funny and raunchy. And if you don't get it, then what the fuck, man." Yeah. Oh, you know what? So Master Tora is saying in the garbage, the pus could at least have given grace, uh, had the had had the good graces to recycle. He should have dropped it in like a library bin, you know? <laughs> yep. Like Here's someone just back. <laughs> randomly picks it up. <laughs> like, yeah. What is this? What is this? <laughs> um, have you have you thought about promotion, like for the book? I, are you gonna? Uh -huh. have, reach out to different magazines and see if they're interested in any of the, um, I am, I'm, I'm doing a lot of in-person stuff. Actually. I went to the erotic heritage museum locally. Oh, wow. They didn't want it cause it wasn't educational. 
I would argue that <laughs> point, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, I'm looking at the porn shops locally. I'm just kind of you know going in or calling and uh, one at a time. Uh, Barnes and Noble won't carry it because they they have to order it through their system and they can't get it through their system yet. So maybe in a future date, it'll be in my local Barnes and Noble. Uh, um, and then I'm going to go to the local bookstores hmm. and just see if I can physically sell them copies. Yeah. Cause it never hurts to ask. Yeah. And what about sending samples to, um, different dirty magazines, you know, adult. I shouldn't say yeah. Dirty. I thought, I thought about that too. And, uh, get, getting on other, you know, like other, um, not see if I can get a blog, someone to write a blog about it. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I would definitely look into, um, um, like, like online, uh, like reviews of the book, like send them an advanced copy or, you know, just a free copy and say, Hey, I'd appreciate a review if you could. Um, cause everyone's looking for content and that yeah. might be good for exposure. You as never well. know when you're gonna, you know, get someone that needs something and, I also imagine a really cool, um, like single page website that's just like the bathroom stall and you just like hit play or something and it loads a random video of like, I first person view of someone walking to the bathroom, turning around, sitting down, locking the door and the poems right there. Like that would just yep. be fucking money. Hey, that'd be cool. That'd be sweet. All right, people, let's figure out how to do this. Everyone, <laughs> we Everyone. need to act. Mind meld. <laughs> Act as one. Go into your public bathroom, write down his poem, and then use your phone and record a video. That's I don't officially do. condone that. <laughs> Just in case civil authorities are arrested. <laughs> it's all going to be your fault. Um, I don't condone it either, just so it's not my fault. But you should do it anyway. <laughs> Putting it out there. I do think that would be really funny. And then every time you reload the website, it's a new video. Like, and you get to have that experience, you know, we, but okay. But here's the trick. Cause we got to find like a really filthy restroom. That there's no up. way. Well, what you got to do is you got to hit the road and you got to get a GoPro on your head and you got to go <laughs> and just start hitting those rest stops. Yeah. Cause that's where you're going to hit the pay dirt that or public public parks. Yeah, public parts would be a good one. And here's the truth. We could add the, the poem in, in post. So all we need is just the bird's eye or the, the first person view of going into the bathroom. Don't do anything weird. Like, I don't want you to look down and, like, take care of business. Just a view of the door. I don't want this to get weird. I don't want to see anyone carving out their own glory hole. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, Shauna, you got it. <laughs> Train spotting type bathroom. That's perfect. And yeah, it is like guerrilla marketing. This is what we got to do, man. This is the way we get the word to the people, man. <laughs> the people need to know. Um, all right. So this, again, is available at uh, Amazon.com. Check out uh, Poems from the Bathroom Walls uh, by uh, uh, Ryan Reeves. This has been a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on and having a conversation that's, with me about it. Is there any way we can get you to read one more? Well, all right. If you're going to twist my arm. <laughs> this is this is a spoiler alert, okay? Because I know you haven't read the whole book yet. Mm -hmm. This is this is one of the holiday ones from the end. It's, what, it's probably one of my favorite that I wrote. It was the night before Christmas and all through my bowels... There was a twisting and turning that gave me great howls. I needed to shit and it needed to be now, but the thought of scaring Santa wouldn't allow. I rolled over in bed and puckered my bomb. A sweet song of Christmas I started to hum. Pretty soon I drifted off to dream that me and Santa were working as a team. I dreamt I was working in his bakery shop and all the cannolis I filled to the top. Then we made fudge, so I filled the fudge pans. Wouldn't you know it, I got fudge on my hands. <laughs> then I woke up all cozy from a dream it would seem. But I was covered in fudge, so was it really a dream? Dude. Bravo!
Bravo. <laughs> That's great. Uh, <laughs> gross. Yep. Uh, that's really great. Um, uh, Master, he, I was gonna say, Master Tori just said she ordered a copy from Amazon. So, oh, fantastic. well, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, everyone in the chat room, go buy yourself a copy. It's good. Absolutely. Oh, and you also have a digital version too. So if you did, um, yeah. if you did, for some reason like me, I didn't want to get the physical book because I was afraid of my kids finding it. <laughs> so the digital was really the only actual option I had. Um, so yeah. I'm glad that you offered it that way. So of course you guys can pick up your own um, Kindle edition as well, which, you know, it's just one of those things where uh, if you're on a bus and you just, put it up the text as big as possible and make sure that that person who's staring over your shoulder gets a good glimpse of it, you know, mm -hmm. spread the word. Let, let them, you just hear this <gasps> from right behind you. You knew they read Oh my God. <laughs> you filthy you son of a bitch. Oh, on an airplane. That's the best place too, because you yeah. know, everyone's looking through that little hole between the seats, watching uh -huh. what you're doing. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> um, Oh man, that's great. So, uh, do you think that, uh, you're, uh, like, when do you think this, uh, next exploration is going to go? How long are you going to continue promoting this before you start working on your next uh, project? Well, I've started putting together in the next one. I've got a couple of uh, stories. One's already fleshed out. I wrote it a while ago. Mm. I have to change it up a little to make it hilarious instead of tragic, but, you know. <laughs> It's okay. I can do that. Yeah. Nice. And then, uh, you know, Penny the Shitter. I'm like started on that one. Oh, she's going to be, she's going to be a filthy kind of a person. Yeah. I'm well, with a name enjoy, like that. You know, <laughs> How could she not? But, yeah. With a name like that. <laughs> um, uh, they're saying it was recommended with go the fuck to sleep and emails from an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so she ordered the lot. There's a video of Go the Fuck to Sleep with like um, Samuel L. Jackson narrating it. Is there? Yeah. If you okay, hold on. So let me let me have this be. Only I can get that guy. Yeah, dude. Then that's my question: is if you could have anyone read the audio book of your poem collection, anyone in the world, anyone in history, let's like broaden it. Who would be your perfect? go-to narrator for your poems in the bathroom. Um, I keep messing uh, up your name, bathroom wall. Uh, you know, I think who would appreciate them most and would probably give them the kind of flair that they and the respect that they deserve right, right. would be the Marquis de Sade. Oh, okay, yeah. I could totally see that. But then you'd have that, like, French accent. I don't know, maybe that'd yeah, make it better. I, yeah, I mean, I'm reaching out to other cultures. Yeah, no, that's, that's very good of you. Uh, I, I like the suggestion in the chat room, Gilbert Gottfried. That would be a <laughs> good one. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried would be great. Just screams every line. But I was covered in fudge, so was it really a dream? <laughs> Ren Kev said Obama. How amazing would it be? For fucking Barack Obama to be like, and uh, suddenly there was a feeling so grotesque. It's just like these long, dramatic pauses and <laughs> was. And all the cannolis. On attack. I filled them to the top. Filled them to the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny Tanner on Full House. Let me think. Who I, I want to go with like a Jack Nicholson. I feel like he could give a good performance. He could. Could, yeah, because then you get like like just his face as well, like the contortion of his mouth as he's reading it and the snarl of his his nose and stuff. I think that'd be a good one. All right. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that's where we should uh, end it <laughs> on a high yeah. note, not a low poopy note. <laughs> Maybe we should leave, leave it on a poopy note. I don't know. Um, where's the best place that people can find uh, out about you? Or, uh, again, we know the Facebook page for uh, uh, Poems from the Bathroom Wall, but do you want to give out any information about you or have anyone reach out to you in any way? I mean, you could just go, go to the page for the book if you're interested in the book. 
Um, I mean, of course, I've got a Facebook page. You can find me there. Yeah. You know, but I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to add everyone as friends. Right. Just saying. <laughs> and um, he he's not going to admit it, but he will write your vows for you in the same vein as going from the bathroom wall. <laughs> so if you're looking for some original vows, I think he might be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> How great would that be? Uh, and I promise to flush the toilet after every dump twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wipe the pee off the seat when you inevitably dribble. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. Um, all right. Well, thank you again so much. This has been a lot of fun. I do highly recommend everyone go check this out. Um, it's not expensive at all. And it's a ton, ton, over 120 pages of original, <laughs> wonderfully filthy poetry. So check it out. Uh, if for no other reason than to laugh. That's all you need a reason for, right? That's it. Have a good chuckle. That's all it is. It's good fun. Yeah. For um, people to enjoy that kind of thing. You and I are going to be collaborating on another show here coming up soon, which mm -hmm. I'm very excited for. So everyone, there's a little teaser more to come from that. And, uh, uh, until, I guess, yeah, until that time, my friend, until we can speak of the devil again. Hell, Satan. Satan. <laughs>